Carlos Rodon has recently thrown a no-hitter. He was an inch from a perfect game, lost it in the ninth with one out on a hit by pitch, barely. Uh, if you haven't seen this game or heard about it, you've been living under a rock, but I finally get a chance to watch it instead of just seeing highlights. So I'm gonna break it down today, uh, tell you what I see as I'm watching it live, basically for the first time. Uh, but this video is for subscribers only, so if you wanna see me break it down and wanna learn as I learn, then you're gonna have to hit that subscribe button right now. All right, we have a special addition to the videos today, uh, some heat maps, courtesy of my friends over at 4app. Uh, so I've put some heat maps on the screen so we can see kind of uh, how Rodon's stuff plays against specific hitters. Um, I have no idea what Rodon's scouting reports are or how he chose to attack. This is just my, uh, you know, it's just internal analytics and stuff like that. So uh, this is not indicative of, of, you know, I don't have any inside information. This is just me looking at it through the lens that I look at stuff through. Um, so anyway, here we are, uh, Jordan Luplo, one thing, I mean, having played with the Indians, I know a lot about their hitters in general anyway, um, but Luplo kills lefties. Uh, he just sees the ball really well against lefties, and uh, so that's going to be a dangerous at bat. Roberto Perez is going to be a dangerous at bat, um, just because he kind of shoots balls, uh, he's pretty good up there at shooting balls the other way off lefties. Uh, so I'm interested to see how this, how this all plays out. Um, but here we see, you know, we got the heat maps up in the top right and let's get going. Fastball in right away. 91. So one thing to watch with Rodon, I played against him enough, uh, early innings, he'll be, you know, hanging out at like 91, 92, uh, really cool story having gone through so many surgeries and still being back in the league and stuff like that. So happy for him that he's having some success. But early in the game, he'll be 91, 92. Um, middle of the game, he'll be like 93, 95. And then usually in the later innings, sixth, seventh, something like that, he'll ramp some up to like 97-ish uh, as he gets going. I'm not sure exactly uh, if he's like doing that on purpose or if it's just, you know, his body kind of gets comfortable and he gets going. Uh, I'm not really sure on that, but 91, uh, we can see the fastball here. Uh, kind of gets in this in this area. Let me change different color. If you look up here on the heat maps, you know the fastball kind of ends up in this area. So pretty good area to start. Uh, I think if it's a little bit lower, Lupo probably hits that out first pitch, um, but he gets under it a little bit. So fastball away, fastball away, change up. All right, that's a that's a really good pitch. So these pitches come out of the same tunnel, most likely. You can see how this pitch is like kind of tracking, uh, you know, this way. And if we go back to the previous uh, fastball, see this fastball is down. It kind of loses that line early. But if we go back to the first fastball, oh, that's the change up there. Sorry, I went the wrong way. If we go back to the first fastball, you can see this kind of like has that line and it ends up kind of middle. So this change up looks like a fastball that's going to be in the zone. Uh, here's the fastball down and this change up, it's down middle and it looks like a fastball that's going to be in the zone. And you can see this kind of like down from, uh, from middle of the zone over here and outer half is a pretty good area uh, for that change up. So pretty good sequence right here. Sets up the tunnel very nicely. Oh, there we go. I'm frozen. Got to get unfrozen. All right, so we're one, two here. Come back with another changeup down off. Good pitch, didn't get the chase. Back foot slider. So that's an interesting pitch there. Um, you know, you have this, you have changeup here, changeup here, you have fastball, whoops, fastball kind of here. So all, all these come out of the same tunnel, but they all kind of go this direction. Uh, and then you come back with this slurve that starts kind of in that area uh, and ends up kind of back foot, a pretty good pitch, um, pretty good area to go. You can see the heat map there, pretty good area to go, uh, but doesn't get the swing. So we're three, two, and we throw that fastball. Now this looks like a early in the game, um, you get more of the plate. Uh, it would look like a bad pitch. It's middle, middle, it's a fastball, middle, middle. We can see the velo spike up here to 95. Uh, so he put a little extra on that. And, but you look at the heat map and middle, middle fastballs with two strikes are not bad. Uh, clearly this hitter 
uh, kind of sits on, not sits, but is looking more for off-speed pitches in two strike counts, so his fastball kind of beats him. That's one, that's one reason that heat maps are important to look at and to understand because they give you a lot of good uh, insight into what a hitter's approach might be uh, in two strike counts or prior to two strike counts. Anyway, Jose Ramirez, great hitter, good buddy of mine. Let's see what happens here. Fastball up and away. So now you're behind 2-0. You'd assume a fastball is coming here. He gets the fastball, but he gets it in a pretty good area. You can see this kind of up and away zone here is pretty good uh, in this situation. Fastball up again. <laughs> Jose, where does your helmet go all the time? <laughs> He's so funny. All right, let's see what we got here. Back foot slider. Uh, kind of hung it. Looks like he was trying to go back foot and he hung it a little bit, but that top shelf slider, I've said this in a lot of my videos, this top shelf slider up here, uh, it gets either a lot of takes or it gets a lot of like kind of weak pop-ups. If you get it in the middle zone of the uh, in the middle of the strike zone, it gets hit quite a bit, and usually down is a ground ball or a swing and miss. So this area is the area you don't want to go, but this area up here, uh, there's a lot of outs up there for whatever reason. I'm not sure if hitters just don't see it, they kind of freeze, they don't react to it well or what, but uh, and you can kind of see that that's bared out over here. Um, that top third of the zone is, is pretty green, so gets this pop-up. Okay. Fastball up and away, no. There's a strike. Good pitch right there. That fastball away, change up away combo is really good. You can see Fran Mills a little bit out front here. You can see the body, you know, kind of breaks down a little bit and he's out front reaching a little bit. He's such a big human, my goodness. Back foot slider, yep, good pitch. Goes to it again, gets a check. And this has got to be something going the other way. Yeah, there's the change up. Really well executed at bat and got some, some fastballs over here and got some change-ups in this area uh, before two strikes. We tried the back foot slider over here a couple different times, didn't get the swing, uh, and then we go to the change-up off the plate. So just living in the green areas here, pretty cool. Gets the out. Rosario is just a free swinger, uh, at least in my experience with him. Um, so I imagine he's going to be swinging a lot. Fastball up and in, but I'm a righty, so uh, maybe it's just different off lefties. But his, this down and in area is going to be the is going to be the area that you want to avoid, obviously. Fastball away, 2-0. It looks like they're trying to go down and in here. So this is a fastball. Get a little like backing off the plate here. It's almost like this ball started in and came back this way, but nothing he throws, you know, no, nothing hard that he throws would do that. This ball had to start kind of over the middle and run in. I wonder what the what Rosario's approach was here. Maybe he was looking for something breaking, and as soon as he saw it coming towards him, instead of kind of moving away from him, he got out of the way. Um, but you know, this pitch, you know, kind of right in this right in this zone right here, uh, somewhat dangerous. It's kind of tickling that uh, that hot spot down there. Um, but gets away with it and then comes in off the plate and you can see that you know in off here a little bit elevated uh, is a good spot and you can see why he just gets a little bit jammed the ball comes towards him it gets off the kind of has to pull his hands in right here uh, and just kind of slices it off so not sure exactly what the what the approach there was in the 2-0 count but um, after the reaction in the 2-0 count, kind of jumping out of the way of that fastball, I can totally understand why they went right back in there. Um, okay, fastball up and in, good spots. Basically, you're just trying to avoid the slider kind of hanging middle right here prior to two strikes, and then uh, then you want to get a little bit more expanding on this hitter. You want to expand his own a little bit, so good change up down in the green there, and then you get this fastball. Now, this ball is hit pretty hard. It happens to go right to him, um, and it's off the plate, but it's up. And you can see this area right here on the fastball map is not super green. Looks like if you want to go up here, uh, you can go up there to, to finish here. Um, but not sure on the sequence. Let me, let me watch this sequence again. Let's see what we got. Go first pitch fastball up and in. 
no real read. Change up, down, and away, no real read. I like, I like another change up here or something, you know, kind of running this direction here. Uh, this fastball up and away just gets, now maybe he's trying to go here, which is good, and he just misses. That's probably what happened. It, it definitely looks like the catcher is elevated and saying, hey, I want this ball up. Um, so probably just missed a little bit here, but anytime you get this ball over here, um, you know, if it's elevated, anything here, a righty can shoot this ball uh, this way pretty easily. Now, one of the reasons I went over this in my Trevor Story video recently, um, you have your arms and your bat, which is a certain length. So this, let's just call this like your length. Now, when you have to move that down this way, you don't get extra length. So you have the same distance if the ball is down that you have to reach, but you can see the, the difference here laterally uh, you know, you have this much more area where you can't get to it, where if the ball is elevated, you can cover all of that zone. So if this pitch is, you know, kind of down here, he reaches for it and very little chance he gets to it. But this pitch up and away off the plate can be shot the other way. And that's exactly what happens here. He just happens to shoot it right into the, into the shift. I guess they had a little shift going on, but right where Abreu was playing, hit it pretty hard, but uh, right to the fielder. So a chance for a hit right there for sure, but... Uh, you know, gets away, I don't want to say gets away with it, it wasn't a bad pitch, but uh, goes right to a defender. There's a curveball, doesn't throw many curveballs, but lands it. Fastball down and in. Once you land this curveball away, like this at bat is pretty well set up because you have this like big look here. So now it's 0-1 and now he doesn't really know exactly how you're going to attack him, especially because he doesn't throw this curveball very often. Um, it's just kind of a wrinkle in there, so you steal a strike and the hitter is kind of confused. So I imagine this isn't going to end too well for Naylor. Yeah, and you get that weak ground ball on the slider away. It's amazing how one pitch can kind of set up in a bat if you land it first pitch. Um, here's Berto. Berto's going to be trying to shoot the ball this way. That's kind of always what he does. If he catches a ball kind of in the zone down here, um, he's going he's gonna to be able to pull this ball for power. Uh, but I'd imagine Berto's going to try to stay inside the ball and hit it this way. So what do we get here? A little bunt attempt. Don't get the fastball off. Fastball down and away. Pretty good zone. This is this is the area right here to Berto where he just kind of flat swing and like sends the ball this way. And I think uh, I think that uh, he hits the ball pretty hard actually later in this game if I remember correctly on that pitch. There's that change up in. So this is a dangerous pitch. And Alberto, you can kind of see the reaction here. He takes it, he's like, hmm. Kind of looks up like, man, I should have swung at that. This is right in that zone. Like if Berto swings at this, it's right in his power zone. Um, dangerous pitch, but gets away with it. One, two. And there's that, yeah, 96. So we're in the third inning here. We already got 96, so he's feeling pretty good today. But this is the, this is the zone you can see on the fastball map down here. It's kind of not perfectly down and away. Uh, in this red zone, and Berto hits this ball pretty hard. Uh, and you can kind of see him, pulls his hands inside of it, deploys the barrel, stays on it really well, uh, and smokes this ball. But uh, gets run down in the gap, so. Okay, we got Yu Chang here. High curve ball, gets the call. I love when, I love when umpires will actually call a high curve ball a strike. Um, it's a huge pitch, because it's such a high arc to get down there, that it just raises the hitter's eye level so much. Now they have to deal with any any trajectories that are in this area. They have to deal with it because you've shown that you can throw the top one, the one at the top of the zone with the biggest break and get a strike on it. So really sets the at bat up here. All right, I missed this one. Change up, up and away, just miss. Change up, up and in. Now this might look like a bad pitch to some people, but the White Sox, and I don't know if this comes from uh, Giolito or if it's an organizational philosophy or what, but uh, G. Lito throws a ton of high changeups, and he, he tr actively tries to throw it there, um, and has a ton of success with it. And this pitch is kind of up, but you can see, and we're in a one-one count here, and you can see this kind of up and in changeup area is pretty green um, for whatever reason to this hitter. So it might look like a bad pitch, but to this specific guy, ends up in a in a pretty good spot and get this kind of weak pop up. The ball never comes down. Goodness gracious. All right, loop blows up again. Fastball away. 
Fastball down. He's been behind quite a bit today. Um, usually for perfect games, you see it's like ahead, ahead, early outs, uh, ahead 0-1, 0-2 all day. This has been quite a few 2-0 counts that he's had to climb back in. And the reason that's noticeable is, um, or noteworthy is that when you're behind, hitters just have a better feeling in the box. You know, they have a better chance. They can kind of eliminate pitches and uh, get better swings off. So fastball here in a 2-0 count. Miss. Now we're 3-0. Fastball middle. Makes sense. You're leading off the fourth. It's 8-0. You're not going to swing at a 3-0 pitch. So square up the zone right there. Square up the zone again. 96. Gets it by him. That's a dangerous pitch there. 3-1. Just kind of middle. And you can see Luplo's a little bit behind on it. The barrel doesn't... It's kind of one frame behind on that as the ball passes the bat. Just gets by him. And after that swing, i got to imagine another hard, something hard up. Beats him. Yeah, it's kind of same spot. So just threw three fastballs by him. Just timing-wise, wasn't quite on time with that. He's fired up. He's got... It's already the fourth. Um, so at this point, like he's probably not thinking perfect game or no hitter or anything. It's only the fourth inning. He's off to a good start. He's feeling good about himself. Uh, feeling good about his stuff, clearly. Um, but it's interesting that there's some competition here, especially in an 8-0 game. Um, it's rare to see pitchers getting fired up about, you know, you, you can tell that he's in it right now. He's like, he's really competing and he's really locked in. Pretty cool to see because you get this like reaction. That's why it's kind of why I left it in there. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing. I can see that in the 6th, 7th, you know, perfect game in the 6th or 7th. You don't want to walk a guy, you come back from 3-0. In the 4th, it's pretty cool. Uh, he, he can tell he's clearly like feeling good about the game. So, ball one again. Get that middle fastball. All right, Jose. Good pitch there. That up and away changeup. High changeup, pretty good. Now, that's a dangerous pitch right there. This pitch probably is protected by the fact that the first pitch that Jose saw kind of started off here and ended up down and in. So this pitch probably starts off a little bit inside of it and comes back. Let me draw a top-down diagram. So here's your mound. Here's your plate. All right. The first one probably started on this trajectory and like ended up down and in. Then that changeup probably starts off on this trajectory and ends up kind of down middle. Um, but because Jose saw this one over here break towards him, uh, a pitch that starts off inside of that, Jose might read it as something that's going to hit him and he might freeze a little bit. And then you get the ball to come back. And even though it ends up in a really dangerous area, you know, changeups down and in, if they don't freeze, those are homer pitches almost always. Um, so gets away with it, but it's probably protected by the fact that the first one broke towards Jose. So sometimes... Even though he didn't get ahead and it was ball one, you can use the trajectory of a pitch uh, to get back in the count later on. One, two. I like the fastball up and away. 97. So in the fourth here, it's pretty early in the game, actually, uh, for him to be pumping this, this velo. Usually that doesn't come until the sixth or seventh, fifth, maybe, uh, with him. But he's clearly feeling good because he's been 5-6 already in the first couple innings. So up and away. And then you get that, that uh, slider down and in again. Um, Jose just missed it. Just missed it. On it, but this ball just gets in on him a little bit and jams him a little bit. But uh, got a pretty good swing off on it. He saw it. You can tell that he's reading this pitch. He sees the trajectory. You can see him sink into his legs kind of here. He just buys himself a little bit of time. This This frame right here down you can see his whole body drop this way right there and he reads it and now he's able to actually like stiffen up the front leg and get a pretty good swing off on it even though his timing was a little bit delayed he hits it pretty well you can see the reaction here you watch Rodon's reaction he feels like he hits it pretty well Ooh, he kind of like flinches like don't tell me that's going to be out um just a fly ball though so down and in, change up. So now this one starts, this one clearly starts, let's bring back the plate here. Uh, here's the mound. This one clearly starts off in and comes back and catches the corner. So there's a lot of freeze on that trajectory, 
Problem is, if it leaks out over the plate and they swing, it's right in the nitro zone. But gets ahead here, great pitch right there and doesn't get a swing. So what I'm seeing is if I don't get a swing on that, it's one of two things. He's either sitting on something else um, or he's not, uh, or he wasn't swinging at all. But it's odd in an 0-1 count that he wouldn't be swinging. So I'm assuming he's sitting on something else. And you can see this fastball. That's, that to me is kind of what he's sitting on. So when he saw the change up kind of away, um, he probably saw this trajectory moving this way uh, and slow and just laid off. Clearly to me, he's looking for something in here that he's gonna pull uh, and this ball beats and he gets it. You can see we're trying to go up and away here. Um, this, is, this is kind of the area we're trying to go to and then he gets this ball that runs in, throws it by him. Uh, but that to me is what Fran is looking for. So off of this, you're going to want to throw something that looks kind of like this, and either the changeup that goes this way or the slider that goes in this way to get him. Or after that swing, you could elevate up here. That's what I got. There's that slider down and in, doesn't get the swing. And there's that fastball up into 97 there and blows it by him. Gets a bat on it. Blows it by him again. And then you come back with a slider. And this is actually a pretty good at bat from Fran Mill. Top fifth, no outs. Then there's that change up, yeah. So after <coughs> three, <coughs> excuse me, three fastballs up here, a couple fouls, you can see that he's on this last one, he's struggling. This is the slider. He's struggling to get the barrel to it. He's kind of having to pull. You can see his arms. If you watch his arms, he doesn't get fully extended. He's kind of leaning back to try to clear some space, and then the arms kind of pull across the chest. Now, he's strong enough to hit this ball a long way in this position, uh, but this ball is beating him. He's having to like buy himself some time and try to get the barrel to it. So after he sees this swing, it's a really good read on this next pitch to throw something that looks like that and then ends up in. You can see how poorly he hits this, where he gets it off the, the handle of the bat. Um, and then you come back with the change up, the, kind of the three, the three areas I mentioned, you could go higher, you could go with something in this area, the slider, you could go with the change up over here, and he hit all three of those areas uh, and gets the ground out. So good sequence there. Good at bat from Framil, but good sequence from Rodon. Fastball by him, go with it again. Yep, fastball really late. Now this is dangerous because if he's late on this up and away and he just kind of like, blocks it almost just sets the bat there and like blocks it this way there's there's some hits there um but he's a little bit late and fouls it off and now this has got to be a slider yep go back to it yep now you go fastball up and in ah, i went right back to the slider yeah so good sequence here this one probably starts these, these prior two are probably not quite close enough you can see you're getting a little buy-in this one here you get a little bit of buy-in but this ball is probably starting lower. Uh, you get a little bit of buy-in, shuts it down. Then you get a little bit of buy-in on this one. It starts a little bit more in, a little bit higher, and breaks off. Uh, you get a little bit of buy-in. And then this one starts a little bit higher, kind of like the first fastball that he swung at up here, and then it runs away and he just misreads it. It clearly hit a tunnel. He clearly read it as like a fastball or something that was up and in. He's, you can see he clears the hip. If you watch Rosario's hip right here, cleared right there. He clears it. You can see that hip go. So he clearly thinks this ball is going to be kind of up here. So he's going to pull it. And then you can see his body's drifting this way. And this ball's running the opposite way. And he just runs out of, out of length. Clearly got fooled by that pitch. I think that was the first time actually that Rodon is like tripled up on a pitch. And he threw a couple fastballs, tripled up on fastballs earlier, but um, definitely on off-speed stuff. So uh, just whipping something out that's a little bit different here in the in the fifth. Ooh, gets away with that one. Change up middle, middle first pitch. Now he throws a really good one off and gets a weak ground ball. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> Little scary here with a perfect game going on. High throw, Brady does a good job of staying down on the base, but you can see this kind of come out of his hand up a little bit. Whoop, whoop, okay. Fastball up and in, weak ground ball. Now what? this is coming out for the six, so we're getting, 
We're getting close here. I don't know what the velo is on it. Looks like it's 94, but uh, it just kind of beats him. See the hands just like really pulling across the body here, uh, trying to get the barrel there. Um, and ground ball, like right to the shortstop. Now this is, okay, yep. This is a dangerous at bat. I, to me, Luplo and, and Berto were the two dangerous at bats. Ramirez as well. Um, but just knowing Berto and, and Luplo against lefties, like against Rodon specifically. Uh, so Berto just shuts it down, takes a pitch here, slider down, slider in, gets a little bit of bite. Berto's pretty good at defining the strike zone. He doesn't chase a whole lot. You got to get it pretty close to get him to chase. So we're in this 2 1 count. Fastball up, so now 3-1, you pretty much know a fastball is coming here. So Berto's just looking out in this area like we talked about earlier. So if a ball's in here, I imagine he's going to hit it pretty well. Oh boy, okay. So this one gets down a little bit, and you can see that kind of down and in zone that I mentioned too with Berto if he's looking for off-speed pitches. Now he knows that a fastball's coming, so he's going to be on time. Gets the barrel on this and smokes it. And you can see Rodon's reaction. Head snaps really quick. And just a fielder's just right there. Now this ball probably should have been a hit uh, with how hard it was hit. I imagine this ball's hit like in the mid hundreds, 104, 105, somewhere like that. That's not mid hundreds, but 104, 105, but uh, right at someone. So every no hitter in perfect game, there's usually a little bit of luck that, uh, that goes into it. And that one I think was one of those. 2-0 here. Fastball up, 97. There's that change up, freeze, fastball up again, slider. Oh, great pitch. And you can see Rodon's fired up there too. Here's a six, he gives a little glove pound. Right there, fired up. Pretty cool to see, he's starting to feel it. There's that freeze curveball. Now Luplo's another dangerous at bat. Oh, man, he's not seen the fastball today. That's four that he's gotten blown by him, five. Okay, now this pitch, this pitch right here, set up by the very first curveball. Now you can see how high this curveball. Remember, I talked about this up curveball has this trajectory, and you got to you got to any any ball that's less pop that pops up less than this. So any ball that's in here, you kind of have to you have to chase or you have to pay attention to after landing this first pitch high curveball. So what do you get? You get this fastball that's up, that's by him, and then you get this one that's way out of the zone, but you see it follows that line that's less pop, that pops up less than the curveball. So you have to start, and then it's just hard to lay off once you start. Great sequence right there. 97. First pitch changeup up. Lots of outs up there. Up changeups. Ooh, don't crash into each other. All right. Fastball up and in 97. In 97 by him, 96 up and away. I don't like that as much. You get a guy that's late in here and you give him something that's a little bit slower reaction, gives him his bat a little bit more time to get to it, but misses, so it's fine. Change up, slider. Still hasn't walked a guy yet, so that's a big, that's a big pitch right there. And you can see his reaction. He's like, ah, I missed. Like, all right. Oh, he gets. <laughs> so ball four should have walked in to lose the perfect game. Ball smoked uh, right at someone. So gets out of it. That's the seventh. Fastball up and away. There's got to be some sliders in this at bat. Oh, all right. This is the change up down and in that I've been waiting for someone to swing at all game. And you can see if he happens to catch this, he's right on time. Arms are fully extended. That ball's going a mile. He just happens to get there. Just a just misses it. Just a slightly below it. He gets off a great swing on it though. That's that's the danger of that pitch. A little out in front of that one. Man. That just scares me, especially with a guy like Fran though. Got a pinch hitter here, so looking at like uh, you can kind of work the edges here. These this kind of fastball up and away, Jake Bowers. Uh, as you can see, this is directly in the green, 96. Now, this is a really tough at bat. It's the eighth inning. Guy's got a perfect game. He's feeling it, and you get put into pinch hit. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? Good slider off. Good slider there. 
tries it again, now you go elevated fastball. What a great sequence. Fastball by him here, three sliders over here to slow him down, and then fastball right back up here. And you can see just living over here in the green areas and the green areas up top there, here and over here. Great at bat, great sequence. He's fired up, he can feel it. In change up, slider down. Now those probably share a really good tunnel. Slider down, great sequence, and you get this fired up, like, he's just feeling it is fired up, love it. Tough one, tough one as a hitter, you get this kind of like front hip freeze, sets up the at bat. Slider down off, slider down off, uh oh, oh gosh, oh, whoa. <laughs> so much going on here. <sighs> Look at Rodon. Watch Rodon's reaction on here. So he's running over there. He's in the moment. He's like, oh, I got to cover. He realizes that he's not going to get there. So he shuts it down right here. And he gives this little hop like, ay, because he doesn't know that he's going to get there in time. Look at his reaction. He's like, uh, what a play. I don't know if he's out or... I think Naylor beats him to the bag there. Oh, maybe not. Maybe Abreu hits it right there. Did this play go to review? Ugh. Bad position for Abreu's hip right there. Look at him just selling his body out. Naylor going in. And the umpire emphatically. Emphatically. Look at that. Bam! Naylor's like, no way. He says something. This play had to go to review. What does Rodon do? He gets the glove pound. He's like, we're not sure if this is going to be an out or not. Everyone's just kind of looking around like, um, like, is this how it's going to end? I guess he's out. So lots of drama there. Fastball in 96. Fastball up. Great sequence. Late here. Late here. You go right back up. Higher. I like it. 98. Okay, here we go. Oh no, there it is. I mean, this is a this is a perfect sequence. Late, late, late. Throw something that looks up, that's in here. You're gonna get the swing and miss. And he just pulls it just a little bit. Dangerous pitch is down and in, because if you do this, you yank it and you hit a guy right off the toe, right there. Oh dang. A little head shake here. I wonder what the... You can see he's shaking his head a little bit right there. Oh, he's like, yeah, there it is. The frustration, like, hands up. Just wondering, like, any way... Is there any way you can review that and say that it wasn't a hit by pitch? What a tough way to lose a perfect game. Oh, no. That sucks. Now, mentally, you lose a perfect game there. One thing happens, you're in the stretch for the first time the entire game. So command may get off a little bit. There's also got to be a huge letdown mentally. Because like you're feeling it, you're attacking, you're like two more outs, I'm going to get this. And you're like, I lost it. But he's still got the no hitter going on. So stuff to watch for here. Goes right back to it. I think if he throws this pitch to Birdo, maybe he gets a swing. Maybe it's still going. I don't know. Anyway, ball one. Gets a swing up right there. 95 swing up. Oh, you're going <laughs> to... That's a strike now? Oh, man. That's bad. feel bad for Chang right there. Just had the ball, the bat taken out of his hand. That ball's not even close. But, you know, you get this close to a perfect game and a no-hitter and you start getting some calls like this. That's tough. Down and in, change up. Luplo is the last guy, of course. The guy that kills lefties. Got to get him out one more time. One more time. Change up down in, change up off. 
97 on pitch 108, 109, pretty good. 99? <laughs> 99 on pitch 110. 1 2, he's just like, I'm throwing this thing as hard as I possibly can and, and blowing it by you. Didn't get the swing. Ooh, a little bit of tension right there. Look at look at Radon's reaction. Oh, he's like, oh, 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 okay, okay, it's all good. Fastball up. Now 3 2 here, you don't have to worry about the perfect game. So do you throw a strike or do you like. Try to get him to chase. Oh, man. That down and in, Luplo gets a, he's out ahead of it for sure. Gets a barrel on it, but just can't do anything but pull it foul. Finish with a punch out here. High change up. And the reaction from Abreu. Pretty cool. Lots of high changeup outs. Lots of high changeup outs in the game. Rodon's so excited. That's so cool to see. Look at him running to his catcher like this. <laughs> that fires me up. I love that reaction. Oh, that's awesome. He, he actually, he pitched really well. Pitched really well. He's behind a little bit more than, you're, than you usually would see in a no-hitter or a perfect game. Uh, had some deep counts. 3-0 count that he came back and won early in the fourth to keep the perfect game alive. A couple 3-1 counts that he won. Couple balls that were hit right on the screws, right at people, but uh, you know overall pretty darn good performance. And up to 99 in the ninth on pitch 110. That's how you can tell he was feeling it. Remember, he started the game off at 91 for his first pitch, so a pretty big climb there. But uh, man, I'm really happy for Rodon. He's I think he had capsule surgery, he had shoulder surgery, and Tommy John. I think he's been out. He's missed a lot of time, and to see him come back and like have this type of outing is is pretty cool. Man, the White Sox got something good going on. That's pretty. That's pretty fun to see. Um, anyway, I learned a lot from no hitters. Hope you, hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments if you like the heat maps. If you want to see more of that stuff, more kind of internal analytics and how pitchers may or may not go about breaking stuff down. How I think about things, anyway. Uh, but that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.